Okay, good to go. Thank you. Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, the reason uh, that we're speaking with you this morning is that uh, the festive season, as we know, is well and truly upon us, uh, which is a great time of year um, for families and friends to get together and celebrate at the end of the year and the Christmas and New Year period. Uh, but it's also a time of year which we become really concerned about uh, behaviour on our roads and, and people being safe on our roads with a combination of celebrations that go along uh, with this festive season, uh, also travel, uh, particularly to the regions and across regions uh, in South Australia. And so at this time of year we like to really remind people about their obligations on the road and try and ensure that as best we can that people will get home safe uh, and enjoy this festive season in a safe way and not lose their life or have a lifelong injury as a result of a road crash on South Australian roads. It's really a poignant time of year for a lot of families. In fact, 67 families this year uh, will not necessarily be celebrating Christmas because they have lost a loved one on South Australian roads. Over 660 people have also suffered serious injuries uh, during this year so far. So there are a range of families where Christmas is not going to be a time of celebration. It's going to be a, a time of um, ongoing grieving and mourning of uh, lost loved ones, which you know, is from an entirely preventable crash on our roads. So we're imploring people during this school holiday and, and festive season to make sure that you plan your trip. Plan your trip if you're heading uh, into the regions. Make sure you allow plenty of time. As we know, there are roadworks and other things that will delay your trip, so make sure that you plan ahead. Don't drink and drive, don't take drugs and drive. You know, these are simple messages which uh, a lot of people still don't adhere. In fact, last week, last Friday, we were in a 24-hour operation for drink and drug driver testing, and 35 people uh, were detected uh, having either consumed alcohol or illicit drugs uh, before getting behind the wheel. Now, thankfully, um, they were actually picked up by the police before they could either injure themselves or injure or kill somebody else on our roads. We're running Operation Safe Holidays. In fact, Operation Safe Holidays has already commenced. Uh, it will go through until early in the new year. Uh, and during this, we will be having an enhanced focus on road safety right across South Australia. Uh, that means that uh, every police vehicle out there can test you for drink or drug driving. It means that you will potentially be picked up for speeding or dangerous driving anywhere that you are in the state. And so um, what we are asking people to do is to do the right thing. Don't, um, don't get caught by us and worse, don't kill or injure somebody else on the roads or indeed a loved one of your own or even yourself. We know also um, that there are a range of different of the fatal five offences that um, contribute to uh, lives lost on our roads um, and these remain um, the focus of our operations during this period. And it's not just Operation Safe Holidays that will be operating uh, from now and through until early January, uh, but we will continue to uh, have a range of different road safety operations, including Operation Safe Hills, uh, which targets uh, driving and poor driving uh, within the Adelaide Hills regions. We know that uh, it is a area which attracts a lot of people, particularly motorcycle riders. We've lost 12 lives on our roads this year to motorcyclists, um, all but one where the, the rider themselves has, has been at fault. So that will be a particular focus for us as well. And then outside of the actual school holidays operation, we will continue to run drink and drug driving operations and other operations that target the fatal five so that we can hopefully prevent um, more loss of life on our roads. So as I said, the message is clear. Please don't take risks. Um, Christmas can be uh, a stressful time, although an enjoyable time. It can uh, be a stressful time itself. Don't take that stress to the road. Make sure that uh, you look after yourselves and your loved ones during this period, particularly if you are going out and celebrating, and particularly if you are travelling to the regions uh, to enjoy a holiday as well. If you choose to do the wrong thing, uh, we will be out there. Um, you will be detected. You will uh, lose your licence potentially and you will lose your vehicle, which is not a great way to start the new year. So I might just now uh, hand over to the Minister for any further comments. <clears throat> um, thank you, Assistant Commissioner. 
Uh, getting home safe this Christmas and holiday period is entirely a choice that everybody can make. Um, there are really simple things that people can do on our roads to make sure that they get home safe and that their loved, and loved ones and families get home safe too. Uh, one third of all fatalities on our roads are caused by distracted driving. A third of all fatalities on our roads involve speeding and a third of all fatalities on our roads involve, involve not wearing a seatbelt. Um, it is pretty extraordinary that simple decisions like putting your mobile phone down, putting a seatbelt on and not speeding are still being chosen to not be done by the community. If the difference between getting home alive is putting your phone down, if the difference between getting home alive is not speeding or putting a seatbelt on, please do that thing that you aren't doing this Christmas period. Um, please ask your friends, your family, your mates to make better decisions this Christmas period as well. Please, from the back seat, tell your driver to put their phone down, to put the seatbelt on if you're a passenger or to just slow down to a reasonable speed limit to get home safe. I also want to make it a plea and implore everybody this Christmas and holiday period to think about those people um, in our community that respond to road trauma, that respond to death on our roads and to serious injuries. Our police, our emergency services, our paramedics, our doctors and nurses in our emergency departments who literally pick up the pieces of broken lives every time someone makes a wrong decision on our roads that leads to a fatality or a significant injury. If you're not going to do it for yourself, if you're not going to make the better decision for your family or friends, this Christmas, this New Year period, please think about our first responders. Think about those people who also live with the consequences of road trauma for their entire life as they serve and protect our community and look after you on our roads this Christmas period. Yeah, so when we uh, run specific operations like this one, it effectively means that every police officer on shift um, is out there focusing on road safety throughout this period, um, as they do normally, uh, but with a specific focus around the holiday period and uh, particularly in the regions as people tend to travel. So while there's not a specific number, um, we are very much dedicated focus to road safety during this period so that we give ourselves every opportunity to catch people doing the right thing, hopefully, um, but for those who do the wrong thing, uh, that will be there and there will be consequences. You've mentioned every car will be able to protect the driver, drug driver. Will we have dedicated um, keys? How many, how often will we see those? Yeah, look, I'm sure the public would love to know how often and where those um, RBTs are going to be located, but um, we obviously don't give up that information because uh, whilst we, uh, we understand that most of the public is very trustworthy and does the right thing, there are a few people who try and avoid the RBTs. What we can say is that there's both static RBT stations, so the traditional um, brain, brain and breath testing stations that you'll see on the side of the road pulling over big blocks of vehicles. But every police vehicle can pull over someone for a mobile test. So you might think you can avoid a random block test, but there's a mobile vehicles out there can pull you over any time of the day or night. So if you take the risk, if you're stupid enough to take the risk, then you will get caught. And historically, what's the this time of year like? Do we, do we see an uptick in incidents in crashes and yeah, the reason that we focus on this is because um, it, it is a really high risk period um, time of year. So uh, over the last five years, there's been 19 lives lost on South Australian roads during this festive season. Uh, and there's been about 81 serious injuries. So this is a really critical time for people to, to be safe. And I think it is a combination of factors. People are out celebrating. So you know, a lot of people are going to be having a drink. Um, but people make some really bad choices about um, t deciding to drive after drinking. Now think about the inconvenience of leaving your car and having to go and pick it up the next day if you've been drinking versus not having a licence for the whole of 2023 or having such severe injuries that you need full-time care for the rest of your life. It's a small inconvenience to leave your car behind or to take a ride share or a taxi home in comparison to what some of the consequences can be.
Yeah, absolutely. Um, the Riverland uh, is not immune to um, our road safety focus either. Uh, whilst there are obviously some road closures and the like, um, uh, that doesn't deter us from actually continuing to focus in relation to road safety in the Riverland. Uh, we do also caution people about um, when you are driving around in the Riverland that because of those road closures, it might take a little bit longer to get there. And we certainly encourage people to continue to go to the Riverland and, and have a look at the river from safe places and to make sure it is quite spectacular what's happening there at the moment. Um, however, um, you will need to actually plan a little bit extra time if you are going to the Riverland area um, because of some of the road closures are in place at the moment. So factor that in. Um, we often find that people make poor choices um, when they're out on the road because they haven't planned properly and they're starting to get stressed or worried about getting to their location late or you know, those types of things. If that's the case, please remain calm. Um, pull over somewhere safe into a parking bay. Make a phone call there if you need to to let people know you're running late and then just continue your journey without the stress. That way you're not going to feel compelled to take risks such as speeding or overtaking where it's not appropriate and those types of things. So we have a, a range of uh, police officers with different roles, um, all of whom have responsibility uh, for road safety. In fact, you know, every person who, on our roads, whether it's pedestrians, cyclists, drivers or passengers, every, it's everybody's responsibility to stay safe on our roads. Uh, in the Riverland, there, even the Riverland, uh, there are dedicated um, road policing or road safety um, uh, patrols out there, but there are also general patrols and other patrols out there who have a road safety focus, particularly during this period as well. So. There's a combination of activities happening in the Riverland. Um, whilst they're focusing on, on one thing doesn't necessarily mean they can't focus on others as well. Uh, and we do have a really highly visible presence in the Riverland at the moment because of the flooding um, as well. So we're trying, uh, we are doing um, proactive patrols around keeping some of those more isolated areas safe. Um, and includes a range of activities such as pole air, uh, such as water police, and such as the road policing element and general policing element as well. So there's a really heightened focus in that area to keep people safe from a whole range of issues. And thinking probably answered there, um, is that right? Is it, did anyone get fined or, or caution to using the mode from that area? Uh, so I understand that uh, there were two uh, young men who were cautioned uh, yesterday afternoon uh, near Pondy. Um, my understanding is that these two took it upon themselves to hop onto some inflatable mattresses and get out into the river. Uh, compounding that issue is that I understand that they've also been drinking uh, prior to going out. So really stupid decision uh, by these two lads. They have been provided education, um, cautions in relation to um, the getting into the river. Now, there's just so many risks out there at the moment. It is really not worth it. It is really not worth it. There are so many hazards out there that people don't understand and the river flow is so high, people don't understand it. Hence the reason that you know, we have a really strong education focus first in relation to this issue because we don't want people to get into trouble. And these two blokes came really close. Uh, look, the decision to uh, crush vehicles is something that happens uh, down the track. So it certainly is an option for us to have a look at in relation to who in dangerous driving. Um, the vehicle's been impounded in the first place, I understand. The, the person probably has lost their licence. I don't have the full details on that at the moment. Uh, but certainly it is an option for um, uh, vehicles to be crushed in, in that type of circumstance, yes. Is there a threshold level expectation for this car to be crushed? Uh, so there are criteria around the... Uh, around when a vehicle is going to be crushed or not, I can give those details to you later. Uh, look, I don't know the exact details in relation to um, how much they were um, either struggling or um, uh, where exactly they were in the river. Although I do know that um, you know these blow-up mattresses are not necessarily designed for anything outside of pools or safe environments like that. So it's. Uh, a very risky behaviour, pretty stupid decision, particularly when you've been having a few drinks before. Uh, I don't know that level of detail. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of the general safety around Christmas, are there any particular uh, hot spots or concern areas around Christmas time? Yeah, look, um, motorcycles in the hills, um, like the weather today, it's, uh, it's a great feeling to hop on a motorbike and, and ride through the hills or other places. You know, we, we get that, we understand that. 12 um, motorcyclists have lost their lives this year. 11 of those has been their fault um, due to their error in driving. Um, so that's a, a key issue for us. 
Um, the other thing is, is that with our advertising campaigns, uh, we certainly focus on the drink and drug drivers, so males between 20 uh, to 40 years of age. And, you know, the Selfish Prick campaign really targets those people in relation to that behaviour. One of the other concerns we have is regional drivers. Um, so when you look at the drink driving stats uh, for this year in particular, um, nearly 80% of drink driving um, related fatalities have occurred in the regional area. Nearly 80% of the lives lost where a seatbelt is not worn are in regional areas. So the facts are that two out of three people, two out of three country people, die on country roads. So we'll have a very strong focus with our country people, but again, we ask them to take responsibility for their own actions and make other plans so they don't put themselves in that position. They're the only ones I'm aware of at this stage. Yeah. Thank you.